Good morning, students. Today we're going to be talking about the at media rule. This was originally introduced in CSS version 2, and it's used to differentiate between different types of devices that a website might be displayed on, so a computer or a television or a printer. Now, only the print version actually saw widespread adoption uh, amongst browsers and other uh, web clients, but that is actually remains pretty useful. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that today. And then we'll follow on by looking at uh, the way it was expanded in CSS3. So to start with, let's take a look at our website. So this is our starter project. And if we jump into the index page, you'll notice that we have a, an aside and then uh, several divs that have just, just some placeholder text. Now this aside, is a element we haven't really talked about, but an aside is a semantic element. That means it conveys some meaning uh, about what it contains. Otherwise, it's pretty much identical to a div in terms of uh, it's a block level element. It doesn't have any default styling associated with it. So we could actually use it interchangeably with a div. But by using an aside, we are saying that this particular element of the page is not central to the thrust of the page. It might be useful to know about, uh, but it's not really our core content. And if we look inside of it, we see that what we actually have is an image, which is basically a banner ad. So that makes sense that that would be potentially an aside. Now along with that, uh, if we think about this, we might not want to show our banner ads when we're printing this website, but we might still want to go ahead and show them, uh, obviously, uh, when we're looking at it on the computer. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that up. So the first step there is we're going to assign a class to this aside. And let's just make it uh, advertisement. So that identifies this aside as an ad. And then we're going to apply some special properties to this uh, aside with that class of advertisement using that at rule. So if we jump into the site CSS and we'll scroll down to the bottom, we can go ahead and add an at media rule. And we're going to specify that this is going to apply when the page is printed. So we put print in as the uh, constraint on that media rule. And now anything we put inside these curly braces is going to be CSS that will only be applied when this website is being rendered by a printing device. So we want to go ahead and take that advertisement class that we created earlier on the aside, and we're going to set its display property to none. That means that uh, this element won't be displayed, and this should only happen when we're printing the page. So let's take a look at that in practice. So as you can see, we have our web page, we have our banner ad across the top, we have our three divs with their content, we even have a little bit of navigation. The question is, are our rules working? Let's find out. We'll go ahead and tell our page to print. And notice in our print preview, the banner ad has disappeared while it still remains on our page. So that is the conditional at media rule uh, being applied only on the printed page. This simple technique can be used to easily create a printer-friendly version of your website. One of the things you might think about doing is replacing colors with gray tones so that it can be printed in black and white and still make sense. Uh, removing large swaths of background color and things like that as well. Uh, replacing fonts. Uh, the fonts that are seen on a screen, sans serif, is actually a lot easier to read, but in printed word uh, serif, which means they have the little uh, feet on the end of the characters is actually easier on the eyes. So you might consider that uh, as well. And you might also look at elements that don't need to be on the page or we're going to require a lot of ink to print. Those might be things you want to remove. And basically think in terms of your end user and how that what parts of the page they actually would want to preserve if they were printing it. Now the at media rule is also the basis for an even more powerful mechanism, media queries. We're going to take a look at that next.